Rosetta Stone, Michael Thomas, Babel, Duolingo. Long ago, the four language programs lived together in harmony. Then, everything changed. When you got bored and decided to watch Netflix instead. Fluency Hunters, welcome to the channel, my name is Ikenna. Now if you've ever found it challenging to stay motivated or to be consistent while you're learning a language, you are not alone. It is not your fault. It's not my fault either. So whose fault is it then? Honestly, it's the fault of the very same language programs that you're currently using. Recently I came to the realization that for a language program to have value in my eyes, it really has to meet two of the following requirements. One, it needs to be effective. What do I mean by effective? Well, let's say I spend 15 minutes using a language program. I expect to learn as many words as possible in those 15 minutes, or I expect to learn a small amount of words, but learn them very, very well so I never forget them. I am all about effectiveness. I cannot use a program that's going to take me 15 minutes to get to a place where another program can take me 5 minutes to get to. I'm serious, I literally have nightmares about this. My, my worst nightmare is literally me just using a program for years and years and years and figuring out that had I learned or had I used another program, I could have got to where I wanted to go in like a tenth of the time. That, I can't, I don't, nah, nah man, that's... It's not me. But that's what happens. So many people out there are using ineffective programs that take them so much time just to get down the basics of a language. That is why, for me, effectiveness is key. That rhymed. Wait, okay, key, me, yeah. Whatever program I'm using, it's gotta work. And it's gotta work very well. The problem with super effective language learning programs is that they're very dry. And by dry, I mean boring. And by boring, I mean chotto mendoksaine. It's really a pain to have to get through them. They are, I mean, what do you have? You have audio textbooks, you have audio programs, you have normal textbooks. Oftentimes these things can be very, uh, very dry, like my ankles on a hot summer day. They need some moisture. Auntie needs to bring that Vaseline, come on. They need to be made more digestible. Not, not, not my ankles, the, the language programs, come on. Language programs need to be fun. Like my videos, hopefully. And I don't mean like studying a subject that you really like in school kind of fun. No, I mean like playing Pokemon when you're eight years old fun. I mean going to mini golf for the first time, okay? That kind of fun. A good language program needs to be addicting. It needs to draw you in consistently day after day after day. After because if it fails to do that, then quite frankly, it's leaving your attention to chance. The program is relying on you being self-disciplined. And let's be honest, in today's day, and age, attention spans are, uh, are going down. I mean, come on, if the choice is between watching that new video that your favorite YouTuber just put out and uh, keeping your head down and going in your textbook and studying the language and ignoring the notification, nine times out of ten, you're gonna watch that new video. Sorry about that. But it's the truth of the world that we live in. Distraction is everywhere. And self-discipline is a very scarce commodity. Which is all the more reason why language learning programs need to be fun. They really need to capture your attention and they need to be able to draw you in. If they fail to do that, it really doesn't matter how effective they are because you're going to lose motivation and eventually you're going to stop using them. The real challenge here is then creating a language program that is immensely fun and also super effective. And that is a pretty tough combination. So let's look at some popular language programs and see how well they do in terms of fun and effectiveness. I'm going to compare them uh, for the sake of analogy to uh, beverages or drinks, right? So I use a program called Pimsleur. I really like it. Let's say, let's say taste equals fun and health, or how healthy something is, equals effectiveness. Pimsleur is like a green tea. It's, it's, it's pretty healthy. It's not, it's not the most healthy thing in the world, but it's, it's definitely not bad. Um, and taste-wise, yeah, it's, it's, it's decent, meaning it's kind of fun and it works out pretty well for me. Um, thus, usually that's why it is my first choice. The second program I usually use is called Asimil. Asimil is definitely more dry. Asimil is like the, the mega, omega, super, super powered green juice, right? With kale, spinach, uh, cucumber, uh, Brussels sprouts. Like it's, it's, it's healthy, it's effective, 
but goddamn, that taste. Then on the opposite side of the spectrum, you got things like Duolingo, which is kind of like uh, Starbucks. It's, you know, it, it tastes pretty damn good, it's quite addicting, but it doesn't really do much for you, uh, especially if you're trying to use it in the latter stages of your language learning journey. Then you also have things like watching TV, which honestly, I'm out of drink analogies right now, so I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna call it how it is. Watching TV, it's something that's very fun and very motivating, but especially for beginners, it isn't the most useful thing in terms of building up your vocabulary. Not to mention you can get sucked in by the TV show and then uh, 10 episodes later you you forgot to even pay attention to the language. It happens. So how does this relate to you? Well, when it comes to language learning, people usually either go with one of the two approaches. They go for super effective programs that are very, very dry, or they go for very fun things like Duolingo or just watching TV, um, but they're not necessarily the most effective. The proper approach, Shi mixing them up. You gotta mix the two. Do not be one of those people who use Duolingo for like two years uh, because it's so fun and because they want to keep up their streak but they actually can't speak the language at all. Or someone who watches a bunch of anime in order to learn Japanese but after years and years and years they only know like 10 Japanese words and one of them senpai. However, at the same time, diving straight into Asimil or teach yourself or uh, living language like more dry textbooks or audio textbook programs is not the best approach either. I mean, they can be effective, but you risk, you really do risk losing your motivation and becoming burned out. Therefore, the combination of fun and effectiveness is very, very necessary. Anyone familiar with my method knows that I go straight for Pimsleur, then I go to Asimil, and that's also in tandem with watching a lot of fun TV shows. By the way, I am partnered with Pimsleur, and if you want to try it out, you can try it out for free. Uh, there's a link in the description. But for me, Pimsleur, it isn't necessarily the most fun program, but it does something very special to me, and this is why I generally use it first. What it does well is it combines a bit of fun with a bit of effectiveness, and at the same time, it really gives you clear progress markers, so you can clearly see the progress that you're making. This makes it very, very easy to finish it, because it isn't completely dry, but but it is pretty effective and it does its job well, which is giving beginners confidence to, to start speaking and helping them improve their pronunciation, their accent, and giving them the basics of a language. This is why I use it. Now generally what happens is after I get through Pimsleur, I'm confident. You know, Pimsleur was a bit easier to get through because it was fun. Now I can move on to Asimo or more dry textbook programs because I already have a little bit of confidence build up that hey, I can actually do this. And also in addition to that, I do watch a lot of uh, TV shows and media and movies that really give me boosts of motivation. But that essentially is a very simplified version of my method. If you're not familiar with my method and you want to see how I personally learn languages, check out my ebook Fluency Made Easy. It is uh, available at www.fluencymadeeasy.com. There's also a link below. So my message to you is experiment. Mix fun study methods with more dry, effective methods and try to find out what works best for you. I mean, I would absolutely <clears throat> love to recommend you one program that was extremely effective and was extremely fun uh, and very addicting and, and captivating but currently there is no program out there like that and it's for that reason why at the beginning of this video I said it's not your fault if there was a program out there like that and you weren't using it then I would say yeah that's your fault but there isn't I mean for me my dream language app or program or game would pretty much look like this. It would be something that combines the addictiveness of games like Minecraft or World of Warcraft or The Sims with pure language learning effectiveness. It would be an app or a game that literally took you from knowing nothing to being conversationally fluent in six to 12 months depending on the language that you're studying and how much time you put into it. Something that would focus very heavily on speaking and story and humor and fun, but it would also maybe have like a cool community focus because I, I know community is so important in terms of actually getting you to do something and motivating you, so it would have like a cool community focus, maybe like with certain aspects of a MMORPG. It would be really something that you would love to use and play even if you weren't learning languages. Just something that could stand out on itself as being very addicting and very fun. Who knows, maybe one day I will create something like that uh, if it's not out there, if it doesn't exist yet. 
Uh, but I mean, for me personally, I would love something like that. I would love it so much. And an app or a game that was like that would literally change language learning forever because it would take it from being this chore and this thing where you have to use a thousand different apps and programs and it would really streamline it and condense it into one single place where you can go and there's a community and it's actually effective. It's, you know, you can actually speak fluently by the end, uh, whenever you reach the last level or something like that, that would be very cool. Here are two comments from some fluency hunters. Every single video I'm gonna try to highlight at least two comments. But yeah, let me know what you think. What is your favorite program in terms of combining fun and effectiveness? Do you even have one? And what would your dream language app or game look like? Let me know in the comments below. I'll see you next time. Ikena, out.